Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Little side note. Um, I'm not 100% better, but I'm feeling a lot better than I did the other day. Uh, so apologies midway through if you hear me coughing. It's just life anyway. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. A lot of the news that we have today is like stuff that people are saying that's actually not really true uh, but they think that it is true, and I'm going to kind of go over it because it's relatively relevant for what's happening in the cryptocurrency space. So, uh, the world's biggest crypto exchange is playing dangerous games with regulators. It has continued to act like the market is still bullish, capitalizing on ICOs. However, in its games with regulators, it will be the ultimate loser. This is according to Technology Review, a publication wholly owned by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. Founded in 2017, Binance quickly rose to the biggest crypto exchange globally. The quick rise was perhaps due to its extensive listings, with some veteran exchanges like Coinbase only listing a few cryptos. It also focused on Asia, a region that far outpaced all the other regions in crypto trading. For those who aren't here in 2017, Coinbase, I think, had uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and ethereum on their uh platform they didn't even have bitcoin cash until people threatened to sue them at the end of 2017 uh binance came out and i think they automatically listed around 25 different coins so they became you know the new kind of go-to spot and they were also smart enough to actually focus on asia because for some reason no one else was focusing on the asian market and there's a lot of people all over asia who wanted to get into the cryptocurrency space <clears throat> so binance kind of uh did that. However, it says, according to the report, these games that Binance is playing can only go so far. But Binance's overall strategy, which seems to depend on avoiding regulatory accountability by playing a high stakes game of cat and mouse with policymakers around the world, comes with the obvious risk that it will eventually get caught. One of the areas that will be an Achilles heel for Binance, according to the report, is its involvement in ICOs. The Changpeng Cao led exchange launched the Binance Launchpad to help blockchain startups issue ICOs seamlessly and target a wider audience. Binance is also known for having a lax user registration checks. The report further alleged its KYC or Know Your Customer policies run afoul of anti money laundering rules in the US, Western Europe, and <coughs> sorry, and other major economies. Like I said, the the the, the news that we're getting is only correct in, in a certain aspect, and I, and I will tell you exactly why. It says Binance is also one of the exchanges that lists the most extensive lineup of cryptos. Many of these are accepted in most regions globally, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, SV. I don't know why SV got in there. Ethereum Classic and Bitcoin Cash. However, some of the cryptos have rubbed regulators the wrong way in some parts of the world. To clarify that, uh, the people who... Okay, so... Uh, this isn't even my opinion. I Between me reading the news all the time because I absorb crypto news like I do, uh, listening to podcasts, listening to things um, from the people from Binance or listening to Chang Peng Cao when he's actually talking. Uh, the problem that these MIT people seem to have is that Binance is not regulatorily compliant within the United States and that they have not uh, bent the knee for U.S. regulators. U.S. regulators tried to come down very hard on Kraken and on Binance and many other cryptocurrency exchanges, and they kind of all, you know, you, they didn't have a physical presence, but they said, okay, we're going to pack up our stuff and pretty much go somewhere else. Part of the reason why the, the, the Western Europe thing is kind of also ridiculous is because uh, we know that Binance has opened up in many different several spots around Europe, and like, uh, as someone who's in Europe, I know that I'm legally allowed to actually use Binance because all of the, they're following all of the actual laws like i've gone to i can't even go into like proper details but i know that binance is legal inside of the european union so this right here is a lie uh, what it comes down to is that the united states for a very long time they still think this way that every single thing that has to do with something in another country that they can't control has to kind of go to them and say, hey, here's what we're doing in Europe. Here's what we're doing in Asia. Uh, we just want to make sure that that's okay with you over in the United States. A lot of cryptocurrency exchanges have said, no, we're not going to do that. Like, what's the point of this? Like, you know, if we're based in Asia or if we're based in Africa, why should we have to, you know, uh, a lot of the problems come from the fact that um, people in the U.S. have access to these websites because it's 2019 in the Internet. You know, you can kind of get it wherever you want. Uh, and the U.S. lawmakers and policymakers have a problem with this because 
excuse my um i was <laughs> gonna say excuse my french uh they're typically older gentlemen who don't understand like remember that thing a couple of months ago or even like a year ago at this point where uh uh mark zuckerberg was like kind of on trial and like the guys were asking him like how facebook worked and how facebook was making money and they didn't understand the actual like basics of getting on facebook it's kind of the same exact thing so we've, we, we, we we've entered this very new world where policymakers and the people who make laws don't still understand the actual specifics of cryptocurrencies I have a very strong feeling that they have no interest in actually learning about them. They are more concerned with being able to control them and kind of saying, uh, this is something happening across the world. If U.S. citizens have access to them, uh, we should also be able to kind of control it, if that kind of makes any kind of sense. Uh, what Binance is doing at the moment, and you've, you know, they've opened up in many other places around the world. Like, they're not just opening up shop in places that don't want them. They're making sure that they have, you know, all the paperwork kind of done, and this is why they've chosen very specific places. Uh, um, yeah, this pretty much just comes down to the fact that it's just the U.S., the, the the U.S. is having a very big problem with, uh, I mean, to be fair, it's kind of happening all over the cryptocurrency space. Like when we have news that all these other countries are creating their own cryptocurrencies, like who's the main one who's been having a problem with other countries creating their own cryptocurrencies? It's usually the U.S. Uh, they have had a very strong legacy. This is not me talking down about them or to them or whatever the case might be. They've had a very strong legacy of keeping the world's economy in check. Uh, this was before cryptocurrencies existed and everyone could kind of have at least a bit of uh, financial security amongst themselves. And um, this still, in my mind, I wonder what the world is going to be like when Bitcoin actually hits 50, 60, 70,000 per coin and madness ensues and everyone's trying to buy up as much as they can and Bitcoin is nearing $100,000. I have a very strong feeling that uh, many countries are going to start to come forward and kind of announce that they're going to be using Bitcoin. And I think at that point, a, a lot of the old uh, legacy financial institutions and players are going to um, just not be as strong as they once were. You kind of get what I'm saying without me trying to be too harsh, but you kind of get where this is going. I've seen a couple of things like this before where people are talking about that um, Binance is playing a dangerous game. And it's like, no, they're not. They're just not located in the US. Like they know exactly what they're doing. They have lawyers with them. Like it's not just Chang Peng Cao getting into a plane, like landing somewhere, um, buying a new computer, typing in Binance.com and going, yep, we got a new place. That's not how all of this works. Anyway, let's move on. Here's also a little lie. Uh, United States regulator, the Commodities, Futures, and Trading Commission, or the CFTC, is actively working to approve multiple crypto-related applications, including the Bitcoin futures for or from institutional platform known as BACT. A CFTC commissioner reviewed or revealed the news in remarks to cryptocurrency news network Block TV in an interview that happened last week. Answering a question about the status of BACT's application, which has seen multiple delays, Commissioner Dan Berkowitz avoided a direct update on the project because, of course, instead saying that the CFTC was trying to assist all cryptocurrency-related products in obtaining the necessary approval for launch in the United States. They said, we have a very interactive process with all of the entities that come before us and are working diligently with the application to process their applications and their products on the market, he said, adding, but we need to ensure that a crypto product, just like any other product that's traded on our markets, once again, their markets meets all of the standards. There's a, there's a very interesting thing in this, uh, regardless of the CFTC or the SEC. Um, most countries have a, an SEC and a CFTC as well. They, you know, everyone mimics the U.S., but as time has gone on, they don't have the same securities or futures uh, trading laws as the United States does. And this is why you've seen in many other countries uh, these, you know, um, other funds and futures and all these other things kind of launching outside the United States. And this is why we had the situation in 2018 where someone had created another uh, it was like a crypto futures or something like that. I think it was in Sweden. And they allowed it to be denominated in U.S. dollars and the U.S. like lost their minds and like went and pretty much like gave them not a subpoena, but they told them to like, you know, cease and desist. Like you can't allow Americans to do this because everyone else has different, like radically different laws. Like there's no law or uh, rather stipulations in many other countries that like XRP or Stellar or Tron or EOS are securities because that it just doesn't make any sense. It's only the United States that has these like crazy, crazy, crazy laws like that. 
Asked whether Bact was now receiving special treatment from the CFTC, however, Berkowitz declined to suggest previous holdups had resulted in pressure to move forward. He said, all of the applications before us, we're, we're working very hard on with the applications, including that one he said. Uh, I'm going to say, in my personal opinion, that's probably one of the uh, most blatant lies that we've had in a very long amount of time. Part of the problem that the CFTC said that they had was that the people from back to, therefore, the New York Stock Exchange, um, had not been clear as to exactly how they were going to uh, be holding and or custodying uh, other people's cryptocurrencies. And people from the New York Stock Exchange said that we're going to do it ourselves. Like, we're going to have, you know, backed on the platform. It's going to be the, the, you know, the actual custody for the thing. And the CFTC said, no, 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 we don't like that. You need, you need someone else. And it's kind of like, it's very weird. I would love to sit in a room while these, while these discussions are going on because I can only imagine the, the kind of talks that really go on. Like, you are holding something back that the New York Stock Exchange is trying to launch because you don't like that they would be holding the cryptocurrencies. You would rather have another company altogether who may not be as inept is that a word who may not be as good as a major market player and actually custodying something uh, and this is why you hold them back i mean to you know had backed been delayed once you know uh back in december that would have been fine but you know three or four times uh we're almost in april now it doesn't take that long because the cftc also said that it takes 30 days to kind of look through the application it's definitely been almost around 120 days right now, and we still don't have a backed uh, because I still think, my opinion, uh, that they, they, they're holding all of this stuff back. It's either because they're trying to accumulate more uh, before prices go back up, or they simply just don't want these things to launch. And I think I have felt for a long time that they're trying to not downplay the markets, but just hoping that it kind of withers away. This is what I felt for a very long time. Anyway, let's move on. So I got an email about this, and I'm not exactly sure how new that it is. The email I received was very like a, hey, yeah, this is brand new. You can definitely use this. Uh, this is exactly what I was talking about, that you can, um, uh, other countries don't have the same problems that the United States has. Kraken is not located in the United States. For those who are not looking at the screen, and you have no idea what I'm talking about. Kraken has launched um, Futures trading on their actual website here's the actual uh, i guess blog post if you kind of want to call it they've added futures trading to their actual website the interesting part is they've added futures for ethereum litecoin bitcoin cash xrp and bitcoin yeah so they have one two three four five coins see it's it's not a problem in other places this is why i've uh, been frustrated many times in 2018, and I'm pretty sure you were all there for my frustration, uh, frustration rants, frustration rants. It's because it makes me a, a lot of annoyed that the entire market, like I said before, we're waiting for pretty much two offices for the CFTC office. You know, it's not the entire CFTC who's working on the whole back thing. It's probably a group of about 15 people sitting inside of a room who are uh, going to give us, you know, the yay or the nay for backed. And it's also one office inside of the SEC uh, that kind of dictates everything that's happening with the cryptocurrency market in the United States. This, this doesn't happen around the rest of the world. Like you kind of you can go to your local government, you can go to your local CFTC or SEC and tell them what's going on. And they go, yeah, that's no problem. Just let us know exactly what's going on. It may not be that easy, but you understand what I'm kind of saying. Uh, anyway, they have launched uh, for those who are interested uh, Kraken now has uh, a, a, a futures market, and I can only assume that they're probably going to be paying out in crypto because it's a cryptocurrency exchange is what it actually looks like. It's kind of insane if you like click through it. So much stuff going on. Anyway, um, this just goes to show like things should not have uh, things should not take this long in the cryptocurrency space because the rest of the world even slightly like in 2018 i'm pretty sure that a lot of countries were waiting for the united states to kind of give them rulings and stuff and stuff like that for the cryptocurrency space um but as the u.s has taken its sweet time other countries have been giving us tons of information about you know what's what's uh um, not even what's the security because they, they usually don't care uh as it's it's more so countries just kind of want to know what's going on like what are you doing let us please know because we're also trying to learn 
kind of interesting, right? Anyway, let's move on. So here's a very weird story once again. Uh, it's phrased in a certain way that you should be afraid, but you should not be afraid because the information on every single news thing that I was reading is inaccurate, and I will tell you why. New research presented to the SEC by Bitwise Asset Management claims that 95% of reported Bitcoin value or the volume is fake. According to Bitwise, only 10 exchanges have actual volume, but it's not all bad news for the Bitcoin market. Claims of wash trading and fake volumes are nothing new. Groups like Blockchain Transparency Institute have been publishing even more reports on the issue. But the suggestion that 95% of volume is fake marks a new high or low point. The main reason for the exchange uh, to fake volume is to inflate the listing fees it can charge. I guess here's the actual thing that they had. According to the research, only 10 exchanges reporting over $1 million average daily volume on coin market cap are genuine. These are Binance, Bitfinex, Kraken, Bitstamp, Coinbase, Bitflyer, Gemini, ItBit, Bittrex, and Poloniex. The report excluded Korean exchanges and CEX.io passed a test, but reports lower than $1 million volume. So here's the part where you are meant to be afraid that it says 95% of Bitcoin volume, uh, exchange volume is fake. Part of the problem is these exchanges right here account for at least 95% of the actual volume that we have flowing through the cryptocurrency space. The, 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 these are the largest names in crypto. What you're not being told or what it is not, you know. The point is, as these control around 95% of all the money that's actually flowing through the cryptocurrency space, the other 5% represent the other crypto exchanges. And of those 5%, 95% of them are faking Bitcoin volume. See how it's very different when you actually, you know, hear exactly what's going on. Like this makes you believe that out of all the volume that's happening in the cryptocurrency space, 95% of it is fake. That means Bitcoin, Bitcoin's not real. Like what's happening to the price? Like why is the price so high? It's that the other 5%, all the others, you know, when, when we go through like um, coin prices sometimes and we see like certain coins are pumping and they have uh, like a daily volume of like $280, that's the kind of stuff like i always tell people i'm like you have to pay attention when you see stuff like that like that is clearly a pump uh don't get caught up in that anyway uh so this made major news everyone was freaking out oh my gosh i can't believe bitcoin's fake and it's like no these are these are the exchanges that you probably should only be using in the first place not endorsing them i'm just kind of saying you know if you want legitimacy and you don't kind of want to lose your money uh, and you have like a reputable source where you're trading back and forth, it might just be a good idea to use a well-known name uh, as opposed to something that just opened up and has like $15,000 worth of volume. Anyway, uh, tying directly into this as well, Coin Market Cap has promised to rearrange how it ranks member exchanges after research found overwhelming evidence of fake volume the company confirmed the upcoming changes on social media yesterday. CoinMarketCap is arguably the industry's best-known tracking service for the market cap of Bitcoin and altcoins, not really, as well as for the activity of exchanges trading them. However, last week, research from cryptocurrency index provider Bitwise claimed that CoinMarketCap hosts almost entirely fake volume statistics. This, in turn, deceives investors and inflates the profile of affected coins. Now, CoinMarketCap has appeared to heed the warnings re represented in the research, which Bitwise sent to U.S. regulators for consideration as part of its application to launch a Bitcoin exchange trade fund. You, how much of a snitch you have to be to tell on other people so that you can kind of get your ETF pushed through? Wow. We are listening to all of our users' feedback, and we are working hard to add a suite of new metrics so users can get a fuller picture of exchanges and crypto on the site. I mean... If, if you were around in 2016, 2017, this isn't uh, CoinMarketCap's uh, first, uh, first time at the rodeo. CoinMarketCap has done some very shady things before in the past. They've listed things uh, that people were like, why are you listing all these exchanges when we know that, that like the volume is fake? And then they take away listings and then they re-add listings. Uh, they're kind of their own really weird entity, and I'm not really sure how they became the number one uh metric for cryptocurrency prices or how they still remain up there it's kind of like 
coin market cap is kind of like the like the tether of of like crypto price places like they've done really weird stuff before in the past but for some reason people just keep kind of forgiving them so i can only imagine uh what new metrics they're actually going to have or put onto their websites uh when they've uh reconsidered stuff before in the past and they've changed things on their website uh we've seen the volume and the price says of different cryptocurrencies drop because they removed them from their website and this in turn i'm sure you can imagine what happens if you see on coin market cap that all coins have dropped by eight to fifteen percent the market starts to go down because you know everyone else starts to panic anyway i think that's going to do it for this video i'm very proud of myself i did not cough once pretty sure i'm going to have a coughing storm when i'm done with this um, at the moment, prices are down a little tiny bit. There seems to be no real indication except for the fact that Bitcoin, I think, dropped below uh, 4,000. That was probably the huge catalyst that kind of got everyone uh, going. Nothing's down too much. I mean, ontology is down by 7%, but any type of movement up will immediately erase any losses. All right, everybody. That is definitely going to do it for this video. <laughs> See, there I go. I <clears throat> uh, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever in this crazy world you might be. I hope you're all doing well. And if you are sick, uh, drink some tea and buy some oranges is what I did. Um, as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Vlad the Impaler, Gil Boa Snake, Rai Rai, Brady Neils, L. Doug, Arthur Yaku, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Nick Mangelavori, Travis Haynes, Yasha Harari, Anthony Charles, Nick Kanaya, singer songwriter Mike Savitz, Wise Night Owl, Joey Carafa, Crypto Joe, Jim Gardner, Jared Schneider, Jeremy Fox, Amy Starsheen, Richie Rich the Third, Jeffrey Ramsey, Cody, Carl Borchinoff, Paxis, Jeffrey Dam, Nicholas, One Earth, One Peace, One Love. Setsuna, Minting Coins, Cryptnotic, RF Dusty, and ShaolinFriedRice.com. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely done. Uh, thank you all immensely for your support. Uh, thank you for your uh, get well and get better wishes yesterday. It was, it was, it was actually very, very nice. Uh, I, was, I was expecting everyone to kind of not like be mean because I was sick, but it was very nice to see all the everyone wishing me well. It was very, I, I do thank you all for that. Um, right. Uh, I think that's going to do it for this video. <laughs> See you.